Welcome to episode 14, Closer to the Abyss. The queen leans down almost eye to eye with Echo, her lips glistened by the saliva. You look t so tasty. You could be my first snack. As the queen's purple black tongue licks her lips and some saliva drips down to the fo forest floor. As it hits, steam rolls from the location. Echo stood there, not flinching, not moving like a statue in the forest, his eyes locked on hers. Sir Leto speaks up, Queen of this part of the forest, it would not be satisfying to eat that one. He is bony and without meat. However, trying something like that will not end well for you or your children. Staring at her, his eyebrow, his eyes narrow, his teeth grind together. The queen's body skitters over a little, raising up to see who speaks. Ah, my, my little farmer. How I missed our talks. You are so far away from your post. A little crackle of a laughter comes out. Her eyes drift back, looking over to the standing still echo. But this one smells good to me. As our eyes go pitch black, children, leave no one alive. As her jaw unhinges, making almost a five-foot hole, engulfing Echo's body in one great swoop. Her eyes widen as a blast of potentia, fire, and ice burst forth through her mouth, making her legs tremble and the scream piercing into the canopy, making the birds fly. Run, Lido yells at the group, pushing them forward. We have the chance to run, so run! The princess stands in the confusion, screams, Echo! No time, just run, Sarlita knocking one of the queen's children back, slashing through the torso of it, making the little thing crab walk away from him. Sora Altov sheathed his sword, grabbing the princess's arm. We listen to the commander. He knows what he is talking about. Some sacrifices have to be made, young one, in order to save the rest. Now run, his voice harsh and low, shaking the princess out of her confusion. The group ran, hurling over fallen trees, ducking under thorny pine branches, and dodging the queen's children's attacks, reaching to the outskirts of the forest line, where the ground turned into rocks and pebbles. With a hint of ruins uh, of old scattered across the landscape, with, the, with which blood peppermint trees growing in and out of the border, boulders, with their roots digging in through the cracks to find purchase into the soil beneath. The grayish white bark gives the scent of peppermint and a refreshing smell to that of the neglected forest. The light in the sky, some. It is almost evening now, and a soft breeze passes by them. The children pace at the edge of the forest line hissing veil towards the group then another hackling sound with clicks started in the deep forest slowly one by one the children slink back into the forest to rejoin their queen as they pass the ruins scattered noticing some emblems of an old language not used since before the cataclysm love runs her hand half covered with blood from hers and from the queen's children, over one of the stones revealing more of the ruins and symbols 
almost like she is tracing a familiar symbol. Chalice slowly and watches her, slowing down, but just to take in notes for a later time to talk to her about this. This group starts weaving through the landscape, covering more ground and heading upward, causing some of them to breathe heavier. Princess leans on Sir Altos' arm. That's the first time I've seen someone die in front of me. How do I handle it? Tears slowly stream down her cheek. Sir Altof pats her head, putting an arm around her. It never gets easy, but when we get to a safe place, ask the commander how you can honor his sacrifice for our safety. She looks up and around at all the group. I don't know if I could handle any more of you dying to keep me safe. Love looks at her as she passes by. And that is that is why I choose to stay with you, Princess. You value life more than riches. Love moves ahead of them, catching up with Chalice. The Princess wipes her cheek. Does it ever get easy? Altuff lets out a slow breath. I wish I could say it does. But then you become more like those that truly belong in a prison. Honor his memory. Of the time we spent with it. That is the only way to survive those who die around you. Again, talk with Leto, like I said. He can tell you about this echo more than me. As they make their way around a boulder that looks like it crushed a pillar and some kind of structure, A familiar voice rings out at the entrance to a cave. Here, this is will be a good. This will be a good spot, and a decent resting area. Echo's voice was graceful and peaceful. As Leto reaches the spot, like old times, right, Echo? Like old times. Glad you are on our side. Tapping him on his shoulder. Love, Chalice, and the wannabe noble. Just look at him as they enter. As the pr princess sees Echo is standing in the entrance and not in the belly of the queen, she rears back with her right hand. A swift motion, her hand finds purchase upon his cheek. Never scare us again like that. We thought you were dead. As she storms into the cave, not looking at anyone else, Echo, shocked and perplexed, stands watching her walk into the cave. Sir Altuf looks at him. I think she is right on one part. Don't scare her. Her slap hurts. As he walks by with a little chuckle, shaking his head, I heard of your kind on the battlefield. I am glad you are on our side. Still rubbing his cheek, what in the silver moon did I do? The party finds himself inside a small but roomy cave. As the scream of the queen finally dies down in the east. The smell of Leto's witch blood peppermint tea fills the air of the cave. And the fire crackling against their ears. The low light shows that this cave was carved not by nature but by hand with symbols of an ancient language upon the ceiling. Leto speaks up. We will stay the night in this hollow cave. We will be safe for the time being. And so there is no surprises 
we will wait here till another joins us. One that might make some of you uncomfortable, but we need her. Princess looks at Echo with piercing heat, then turns to Chalice, who is sitting by her drinking a cup of tea. Somebody could have told me that that was some kind of trick and he was still alive. Chalice looks over her cup, infatuated with the, this guy, I take it. Me? No. No, I just didn't know he was still alive. I mean, that was just rude. Just rude. As she pulls her knees up to her chest and lays her head on them. I mean, we just were getting to know each other. And then that monster ate him. Sir Altov moved to the entrance. I will take watch, Echo. I think there is a need for you for an explanation to the group, who doesn't know your abilities. As he pats him on his shoulder, Echo looks at him. Have you killed any of my kind? He looks at him. No. But I heard from the commander of one of the run-ins on the nor northern border and the coastline. It wasn't pretty from his account. Echo leans against the entrance wall. Just know I don't regret my past. His words slip through like a gentle waterfall. But I have a different future with the one you call Leto. He saved me years ago from my past. We have forgiven each other. And once were enemies, not, but now friends. Comrades. He trusts me and I trust him. He turns to go inside. Sir Altov looks right into Echo's eyes. Only one I protect is her. Know that. I too trust the commander. Just let them know what you are so they can be at ease. Echo nods and gently glides into the clave, slipping down the wall next to Leto. Group, to some I guess I owe an apology for him. For, for my actions. Hmm. I guess some thought I died earlier. As a small pebble hits the wall behind him, everybody knew where it came from. <sighs> Let me tell you a story of my past. Till next time on Silver Mammoth Saga.